Who walks the earth? My womb is fertile for giving birth. I am a woman planted in truth. I grow my branches from sacred roots. You are the form of who you want to be. So come untethered, your soul is free. We're here to heal. We're here to thrive. We are a dream who's come alive. We light a candle, our hearts awake. Illumination for God's sake. A revelation for God's sake. An evolution for God's sake. An inspiration. For God is sake, 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 for God is sake. And so it is. Hello, Essence. This is Jody England, <clears throat> and you are listening to Wild Soul Medicine Radio. I'm back. I'm back from the coast. I was out and about last week, giving my big talk on uh, Wild Soul Medicine, LA style, and it was a big deal. It was a big deal for me. I haven't actually <clears throat> given a live and in-person talk for about five years. And, um, and it really, it worked a lot of edges for me a lot more than I expected it would because, you know, I show up and do this every week and, um, and so I thought, ah, you know, it'll be fine. And then when I got closer and closer, I noticed all of those pieces moving forward around, you know, actually being the fullness of my essence in person and also in front of a group of women who don't know me very well or at all and figuring out like what is the what's the way to be all of me and also honor all of them and uh, you know and not have any of my safety outs of I can get a cough drop if I need it or I can mute myself or I can close my eyes and listen you know so it was a really, um, it was a beautiful experience and I've shared that over the last week. Many of you have watched the video. If you haven't, um, you can catch it on YouTube and, um, <clears throat> we'll po we'll post the links a few places in case you haven't seen it. So actually if you're, um, if you're chatting with us, let's post the link over there, Katie. It's, uh, www wsmrchat.com wsmrchat as in wild soul medicine radio chat.com <clears throat> we'll post the link to the video if you haven't seen it yet and um so i'm going to begin there with our um with our talk for this week <clears throat> because um so much has happened since then right but what's happened since actually pivots on uh, a deep going in to what this uh, catalyst experience actually was. So I'm going to tell you a little more about it. So as I was, um, there's an activation, right? Whenever we push the edges of our, really of our known, of our comfortableness, of um, whatever box we've been operating within, what happens is we necessarily start to experience turbulence, right? So the places in us that aren't in alignment with the new thing are going to show themselves because they're going to have to be moved or shifted or alchemized in order for you to come into alignment with the thing that you're moving toward, right? So, you know, um, I'm going to just describe what this process is like for me because there's some tricky pieces here. And, um, you know, from an outside perspective, the ego constantly wants to attach to 
um, believing that it must be easier for other people, right? Like when I get to this certain place, when I do enough work, when I actually, you know, do that thing or this thing, then I'll be able to show up and give an effortlessly brilliant speech like Jody, right? And um, so I wanted to share what my process was like, because I shared this with a couple people after, and they were really surprised to sort of get the behind the scenes look at what this is. And so I'm just going to be as, as transparent as, uh, as I always am. So on the way to, you know, leading up, there were these moments of like, okay, should I have some kind of an actual talk for this? You know, should I, because I used to give talks and I would always have a, you know, bulleted, outlined, rehearsed speech and they were good. You know, I was a really competent public speaker. I spoke in front of hundreds of, of people and communicated thoughtfully and well and um, you know, so because I hadn't done it in a long time, I was like, well, that's my frame of reference of how this can be. And so I tried some of those ideas on, but nothing was really sitting. And I was like, yeah, it feels really dead from the beginning, actually, to script it out. So no, I'm not going to do that. But I would sort of use that as my go-to leading up. You know, I would, I would use that when I needed a little dose of adrenaline, like, oh my God, and I haven't even planned that speech. And I don't even know what I'm saying. And so that continued, you know, um, interspersed with these gifts that I now have available, right? So with intense presence and peace and calm and, um, <clears throat> and, you know, on the plane, I was like meditating and dropping into my music and, um, allowing inspiration to move through and letting go of my attachments, you know? So this is the medicine journey, right? This is what we're doing in our lives is stuff presents itself and then we work with it or we be with it or we shift it and then new things will come forward. This is the path. This is the journey that we're on. So it's easy when you see people posting their, their Facebook snapshots of like, oh my God, and here's me looking cute. And then here's me getting ready for the cuteness and here's me delivering the amazing thing. And then here's me after celebrating at dinner, right? Smile, smile, smile. Um, I'm getting a visual. My daughter <clears throat> used to watch um, Toddlers and Tierras. <laughs> I know. It's excellent parenting. I know. And um, and she has this thing she does where she mimics the little girls as they're doing their routines and they put their chin, they put their fist under their chin and they like shake their head yes with a big smile, you know? <laughs> and, and that's our like sort of family denotation of like, uh, you're in a falseness right now, you know, like, oh, aren't I cute? Look, I'm doing this thing. So, you know, it's like that. And it's, we're sold that and we sell each other that we sell ourselves that like, that's the whole point of the picture. It's the whole point of taking selfies. My daughter's also the queen of selfies, by the way. And she's always making fun of me because I am the worst selfie taker ever because I can't hardly get myself to, to pose for a picture of being myself. You know what I mean? Like it's the, it's the weirdest concept in my brain and my face just doesn't do it. In fact, my face rebels against it because I'm actually cuter in real life than any face I can make in a selfie, but I digress. <laughs> so, so this is where I was, you know, leading up. And then the morning of, um, Actually, oh, my husband's like, make sure you tell him about the night before, right? So my husband came with me on the trip, which is the first time that he's done that. I've taken lots of, of work trips, but he's never come before. And so um, that was both beautiful and challenging for me. So it was beautiful in that um, he's really a ground for me and he's so in service and he made sure that I didn't have to navigate directions or that I got the food I needed and, you know, all these beautiful things that he does for me that I would be stressed out, you know, with otherwise. And it was also challenging because I have my way, you know, I have my way of, of moving through airports and um, navigating terrain. And I like to wear my LA outfits when I go to California and he didn't have anything like that. And I was like, oh my God, you're cramming my style, you know? <laughs> so, so there's that, right? This is life between snapshots. And then the morning or the night before, so we'd had a beautiful dinner and uh, I drank a couple glasses of wine and um, 
and my husband drank some too, which he really never does. And so he got a migraine and I don't drink much either. So I wasn't feeling great. And I woke up in the night with like a hormonal hot flash. One of the um, iPads had um, was turned on. So the sound was on and I woke up in this like rage of, oh my God, oh my God, what is this thing? And I couldn't, you know, it was like slightly buzzed. So I couldn't actually figure out how to turn it off. And all I could think of was like opening the door and throwing it outside, right? And I told him like, I have never actually, I don't remember feeling that level of rage before. So yes, hormonal and also not a coincidence, right? Like, so there's this way that deep, deep in the underground of my subconscious, there was intense fear, agitation moving through, you know? <clears throat> so that happened. And, um, and then the next morning, you know, I tended myself. And so I, we went for a walk on the beach. I, I spoke about that actually <clears throat> in the, um, in the talk. So I won't say that again here if you've listened. Yeah. Even a lot moving through here today too. Um, so yes, yeah, so I went, ended up going to the beach, had a meditation, um, came and gave the talk. The talk was amazing, and it felt really good doing it. And um, and afterward, my gremlins were kind of moving through. Right there was some um, like, oh, I don't know. It was a little rocky in the beginning, and then maybe the end was kind of rough. And I'm not sure about this part of that part. So internally, I gave myself a B plus. And then we had taped it because we knew we were wanting to put it out. And so, <clears throat> one second. Okay. Yeah, my system is so in rebellion today. Oh my God, I do not want to talk about dying. <clears throat> Okay, I'm just naming that. Trust me, we're getting close to dying. <laughs> Maybe I'm gonna actually have to die if I if I don't um, show up and talk about it. Oh my god! Okay, we're getting there. So, <clears throat> where was I? Oh yeah. So I gave myself a B plus, and then the video came out, and I watched it the following morning with my husband, and I was like. I was mesmerized by myself. I was like, oh my God, I look so good. You know, like I can really see my essence. I'm glowing. I'm in my genius. You know, that is some real medicine work happening there. And I'm so glad it translated, you know, to the screen. And so I was very happy with it. And, um, and so we put it out and it was wonderful to watch you know, people say like, oh my God, I see, I see you and you're shiny and you're beautiful and this is, you know, so good. And, um, and my ego was loving it. My ego was really loving it. And I have to say, I rarely listen to my radio shows. I don't usually go back and um, see how I did because actually I know that's not in service of my freedom. And, um, and yet I was sort of struck by the novelty of the video, you know, it was a little bit like somebody who's been on a desert island for years and years, finally seeing a TV, you know, except for I'm on the TV. So, um, so I admit, I watched it a few more times. I watched it on the plane. I watched it when I got home. I watched a little bit of it with my daughter. And <clears throat> so there was this way that I was subtly and not so subtly attaching to the goodness, right? To a moment of doneness, to, um, I did that thing. Did you see it? You know, and we will do that sisters. We will totally do it. And I don't even know that we need to forgive ourselves for it because actually it's part of what our egos are made for. And there's something beautiful about being able to celebrate yourself and to see yourself without demurring, without shying away. So, uh, I have no apology for that. I really don't. And um, so, and, and, and then one thing that was so beautiful is when I came back, there was a woman in the tribe who um, posted something along the lines of like, you know, 
where I really loved watching your talk and it moved me in all these ways. And if it really was difficult for you to do, to stand up in front of an audience and speak in essence, um, you sure made it look easy, right? And <clears throat> I love the honesty of that, honest to God, because when I looked at it, I thought the same thing. I was like, oh my God, I look like I've been doing this for like for 20 years, like I'm a professional speaker, you know? And so I, I wanted to just name that because I feel like um, two things. One, that's what it looks like when you show up in essence. It looks like you've been doing it forever. You don't have to try. You don't have to be practiced. It doesn't have to be something you have an expertise in. But when you're in essence, everything just seems good. And it is good, you know? And so um, so always keep me honest and always ask the questions. And I promise that I will never say that I'm feeling vulnerable if I'm not feeling vulnerable. Um, <clears throat> and also it was a beautiful lesson for me too to witness, um, wow, it can feel like that leading up to, and then it looks like that when I'm dropped into the sweet spot, you know? <clears throat> so again, love that question. And then um, I had breakfast the last morning of the event with, there were um, several of my magic school students at the event also. And so uh, we were, they were asking what did it feel like to do that in front of people and, um, and I was sharing my process with them and I was saying, you know, about giving myself a, an internal B plus. And before I could even finish how I had upgraded myself later, they were all interrupting with like, oh, oh my God, it was so good. And then this part and then that part. And I go, I know. And then I saw the replay and I gave myself an A plus. And I'm just sharing with you this whole process of, you know, um, even during it, my ego's having a commentary, right? Of like, this is probably totally off the rails. This is so deep for these women who just came for a business conference. What are you doing here, right? Where are you going with this? This is all the chatter that's happening in the background while I'm in this beautiful sweet spot of my genius. And one of my um, students said, are you kidding me? That still happens? That never goes away? And I said, for me, it hasn't, you know, for me, it doesn't, I don't imagine that it ever would go away. Um, because I do have an ego, you know, and I, if I tried to make it go away, I would really just be burying it, you know, and, and they were sharing like, well, there was this one woman who shared that she's trained her ego to only say nice things. And, um, you know, I said, well, maybe, you know, maybe that's a thing. And to me, that feels like actually muting the truth. So the truth is, I don't know where this is going. And the truth is, my ego has some stuff to say about it. And the truth is, I'm both. I'm a genius soul and a human ego. I'm both of those things, you know? So for me, I'll just let both happen. And, um, and I don't make it wrong. And so I wanted to share that too, that, you know, as you're putting your things together, as you're putting yourself out there and the fear comes up, you know, sometimes we take fear as shame or we take fear to mean that we're not quite ready or we should have practiced more. Or we should know more, or do more. And, and I would say fear means you're right on track, beloved. It means that you are doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing. And, um, and the fear doesn't have to go away for you to be brilliant. And the fear doesn't even have to go away for you to feel amazing. Right? Because there's a way that, you know, that fear is also living. And it's only when we have a story that fear is bad that fear hurts. So when we get attached to believing that fear means we're doing it wrong or bad or we're really going to die or, right, any of those things, then all of a sudden fear has a feeling. And fear has a whole story and fear, the shadow of fear becomes bigger and bigger you know? And so when I share this story, like a lot of times, um, you know, even when I share my life, like somebody was reflecting to me the other day about, wow, what a like, what a big, you know, tough year you've had, meaning me. And I was like, oh, really? Have I had a tough year? What have I had? And she was recounting my year, right? Of like, oh, and then you had that kidney stone thing. And then 
um, you separated from your parents and then, you know, you had magic school and that was such a giant thing. I mean, she was naming all these things and I was like, wow, that's a lot when you say it that way. But in my experience, I actually feel like I've had the best year ever, literally the best year ever. This is the most alive I have ever felt. Um, it's the happiest I've ever been. It's um, the most epic, the most epic year I've ever had. So um, for me, because I don't hold stories like that. I don't actually have to place something as like, that was a good part of the year and that was a not good part of the year. For me, it's all a medicine journey in progress. And so there's really no way I could categorize where I'm at with it or if it turned out, you know, as a whole, that's just not what I do. So when things happen that have me feeling good or not good, um, I work really hard to let go of landing, you know, landing in a place because that's where the pain is, is what I've learned. As soon as I start to label that something was good or not good, that's when I get in trouble, right? So having said all that, I um, came home from California feeling pretty high. You know, I love it out there. It's my, it's my place. It's my people. Um, you know, I love being just with my husband and being free and, uh, doing my work. I mean, what's not to love. So we came home and as we were coming home, stuff began to happen, right? So, um, my tailbone was really sore from sitting on the floor with some friends, you know, for hours the night before. And we got home really late at night and my friend who was watching our kids while we were gone, her children had gotten, you know, high fevers and pukey. And so she had to leave early. And then we're, um, our furnace had broken on one end of the house that was freezing. And then we start to notice there's this like weird smell and we can't figure out what the smell is, but it's literally like a smell of decay in my house. And I'm not putting any of this together, right? I'm just, I'm just irritable. I'm tired. I'm like, okay, let me just get to sleep. I just need some rest need to settle into my house, you know. Um, then I ended up starting my moon the following day, and it was really, really intense. And um, I have a dear friend who was going through a um, <clears throat> really significant emotional um, turmoil and really needed support, but I wasn't feeling super supporty. And, um, and also I was feeling intensely what she was going through. And so... So again, through all of that, what I was doing is like noticing, 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 and also kind of riding above it a little bit, right? Like, oh, and then let me watch my show again. <laughs> let me watch the Jody show. That time when I did that awesome thing, these people are bringing me down, but this moment was good. You know, this is what's happening. This is what our ego does, right? So Monday morning, my, um, my menstrual cramps were such that I was like, okay, I really, I really desire some relief here. And, um, I don't do, I really don't do much traditional medicine at all. And I had just read a thing about, you know, ibuprofen causing all of these like horrible health issues. So I was like, okay, I'm not even gonna do the ibuprofen for this one. And so, um, I had some herbs and normally, you know, herbs are pretty good for me. And so I took some herbs that, you know, 99% of people use and they work beautifully for easing menstrual cramps. And for me, um, it activated a full on journey, like a 10 hour journey. And it was the most dark and intense experience where there was this part of me that's like, what is happening right now? Why can't I stop feeling, you know, so weird? And also there was literally nothing I could do but surrender. So I spent the entire day in my bed um, and was front and center to the freak show of death. And um, my body was okay. Um, was okay. It was really uncomfortable in my body. So there was, um, and you know, there was intense sensation in my body, but I knew I wasn't dying. Like I knew this would wear off and I knew I would be okay, but my mind kept looping and looping, right? So I would 
try to relax into, okay, this is just a story that's happening and I'm going to let go of that and I'm okay. And then it would loop me back to like, yeah, and then this is probably the worst trip anybody has ever had on this. And then you let go. And then what if you die? Right. And then it would be some other, some other wild story. And, um, and I could not find a way to navigate it. I kept looking to like, can I connect with the spirit of the plant? Because I know how to do that. And it was like, no, there's no spirit here. Like this, it's literally just this like square block of darkness. And, um, I mean, and it was intense. Like my husband was calling, you know, friends of ours that are, uh, medicine women and healers to say like, she almost looks like she's having a spasm or something. And like, is there a point where we should go to a doctor, but who would we call? And because it was obvious, it was some kind of a spiritual journey and, um, you know, obviously taking me to the hospital was not going to be a thing. And it wasn't exactly a hospitally kind of thing, though it was very intense. So, you know, at one point I asked my husband just to lay with me because it was so um, shitty. And so he did. And he just held me and um, I couldn't even speak to him. I couldn't talk. I couldn't reason it out. I, um, there was really nothing else to do but like death, 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 death. You're probably dying. You're going to die. You're going to die. You're going to die. And, you know, I've spoken about this, you know, other times on the show, like I'm pretty good at being with death. I don't consider myself somebody who has a lot of hangups about death, whether it's my death or other people dying. You know, I'm generally okay with this idea of impermanence and, you know, I'm Kali, right? So I, I, I eschew death and I have no problem with, um, getting up close and personal with destruction and creation, but this was an experience of, um, of more being with like, there was a crevice, right? There was a crevice of death where, um, it's like the pointlessness of it and the inevitability of, um, death, death, like not death to create, but like death as an end, as a dead end, really. Right. And, and so I had no choice, you know, I had no choice but to really be with it. And, um, and there were a few moments, right? There were a few moments where after hours of surrendering, 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 I actually got to this beautiful place of almost samadhi, you know, just like bliss and peace and like, um, yeah, realms I've never been in. It's so beautiful. And, um, and I also could feel like, okay, don't move a muscle or you're going to have to go back to the top of the spiral and do that thing again, you know? Yeah. So even with that experience, <clears throat> I was still trying to surf above it. So I was just irritable <clears throat> the rest of the day. Um, I barely spoke to my family for the evening. I just stayed in bed under the covers. And and I was feeling a little shame. Like, I can't believe I wasted a day by taking those stupid herbs. And I had a lot of stuff I was supposed to do today because <clears throat> I'm Jody England. And I gave that amazing talk. And I have a lot of things I need to create. Right? So there was still a way I was holding myself separate from it very subtly very subtly so 90 percent of me is this like calm medicine woman that is appearing before you and then there's the 10 percent where my ego was like no i'm not doing this <clears throat> that wasn't my journey that wasn't even about that wasn't even a lesson that was just some stupid mind loop that those herbs put me in right so um i let it go and then this morning as I started to deepen into what the show is about, I was feeling my general malaise around, well, you know, I gave the talk and I've already talked about the talk, so I don't want to do that. And also, I'm still kind of pissy and I feel really internal and I don't even know what I would talk about because nothing's really happening, right? And so my beautiful reflectors begin to show up and I said, you know, well, what's moving through you? Because nothing's moving through me. <laughs> nothing's moving through me that's worth talking about. <laughs> Oh my God. I am so funny. Aren't we cute how we do these things? So, and literally like I'm speaking to 
about it now, but this was like amnesia for me. I was, it was a complete disconnect. Like whatever that death thing was, that was not mine and it was not for me, you know? Um, it must be someone else's energy that I'm working here, right? So, you know, I put out to the tribe, like, what are you all working with? And I mean, this is the stars, right? This is the, the moon. It's a beautiful super moon again. I actually was in rebellion. I was like, I'm not even reading. Oh my God, another moon. Didn't we already do all of that? Like, I don't even know what this moon, I don't even want to know what it's supposed to be about, right? I'm just not doing that anymore. <laughs> I'm in the light now. I don't need to do any more shadow work, blah, 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 blah. Um, so yeah, so I check in with the, the tribe and they start to, you know, share things like, and they're things about letting go and, you know, how do I move into my truth and how do I hold my center and how do I stay positive in the middle of negativity? So all of these themes, right, is what people are wanting to know about. I check with my friend and she says, well, everyone I know is really working with letting go, right, in capital letters. And then she says, and then maybe you want to, um, look up Sawin, right? So if you don't know Sawin, it's actually spelled Samhain, S-A-M-H-A-I-N. Um, I have seen the term before, but I wasn't really familiar with what it is. I knew it was coming up and I knew it was somehow related to Halloween, but I didn't know what it was. So I was like, all right, fine, I'll check that out. So I look it up and I'm, and I'm reading about Sawin, which is a pagan holiday. And it's... Um, you know, there, it's, it's had many iterations, and Katie will post, uh, if you're not familiar, you can read about it. But it's uh, that'll be over on the chat page, so wsmrchat.com, if you want to know what Sawin is and what its history is. But it's essentially a pagan holiday to um, celebrate the end of the growing season and the turning of the wheel into darkness, right? The turning of the wheel. So now we head into these shorter days, this fallow state where we let go of, where we honor that which is already dead in us. And so I was reading that and I was like, oh my goddess, oh my goddess, right? I was having that whole journey that I was all day long issuing like, oh my God, it was a stupid mind loop about death. Oh my God, what could be less productive? And I missed the point all day long. That's probably why it had to be 10 hours because they're like, oh my God, run the loop again. She is missing the point. Run the loop again. <laughs> and, and so I just allowed the opening to wash through me, right? To notice just how um, subconsciously attached I had become to my moment in the sun, literally, you know, I did the thing, I did the thing. And, you know, the thing sort of felt like a culmination of all this deep work I've been doing where, you know, I was learning to be here and I was learning to be in the light and singing a new song from west to east. You know, things are going to be good now. Things are going to be good. The awakening has happened. I made it, right? Somewhere inside of me, I was holding on to that even though I know better. I just gave the talk about it. That's what I was talking about in California. That's what was moving through is like dying and burning ourselves on the pyre. I just gave a beautiful dose of medicine to everyone else. All the while hoarding a little completion for myself. <laughs> Yeah, that's what we do. That's what we do, sisters. And, and then we don't. You know, we do it until we don't, until we're shown a more free way, a better way, until we're shown that drinking our own Kool-Aid is actually the most potent poison there is. And then in the end, we're all going to die. Not the death to live kind, you know, that's the kind I wanted to talk to you about today. It's the kind I talked about last week in California, you know, even though I said, don't make it a so that there was a so that, you know, because I want to bring hope. I want to save you from the darkness of the dead end 
that death can feel like. You know, I want there to be a happy ending. And that's why I hang on. That's why you hang on. You know? Yeah, it's scary. It's scary to let go of everything. To lay your whole self on the pyre. You know, even to lay a little bit of yourself, even to lay like your most favorite piece that you keep right down here in the back where no one can see. That little girl part of me that wants everyone to love her. And to think that she did a great job. The one that wants to be seen and reflected, right? In her goodness. She has to go on the fire too. It's a lot to bear, you know? It really is. And so, even when I knew this was our talk today, you know, my mind kept wanting to find a way to turn it or pivot or alchemize it or transform it. And it's like the medicine for today, for you, because of your maturity, because of your wisdom, because of who you are, the medicine is you don't get to keep that thing and be free. You can keep it if you want. You can be the captor. You can be the slave master of your soul. Or you can say, stay where you are. I'll hold all these accoutrements, all these stories, all these beliefs about who you are and what you are and how it all works. And you stay there in the cage, being afraid to mess it all up. I know. I know. I wish there were better news. <laughs> and yet, and yet, <laughs> so I get curious, right? I get curious if there's a way that we pivot without pivoting. What if we stop believing that there needs to be a better news? What if we let go of our construct, if we begin to dissolve the notion of death? You know, I noticed the last couple of times I spoke about death, when I, when I talked about that journey I had where I didn't come here to die and then I, it's exactly why I came here. There's always that moment when I say that where I can feel the deflation, whoever I'm sharing it with, where they're like, oh my God, you're dying, right? Um, don't leave me. You know, like that's kind of the wave that happens in between that and the moral of the story. And so I feel like I'm always apologizing for, I don't mean death like that, Right. And then I got a full dose of death like that. No, what I mean is the death you don't come back from. The pointless, this is the end, it's not coming back. Right? It's like, you know, we all want to jump to the wheel turned, it's cycle of life, it's the end of the season, and to everything is season, and so let's await the summer. Right? And yet, we miss the point where there's the leaf that fell off the tree, and that leaf is never coming back. That leaf isn't going to grow again. It is complete. It is done. Right? If that tree was trying to hold on to that leaf and tie it in its hair or take a video of it or watch that beautiful slow-mo of how the leaf fell to the ground in all its beautiful perfection,
That would be craziness. And yet the tree isn't dead for having let go of all of those leaves that lay on the ground, decaying, decaying, they're wet, they smell, they're very lifeless. Yeah, and it's like tempting to want to go to, and it's perfect, and it's perfect, right? But there's this invitation here at Sawin for us to be with the death of it all. To challenge your system, to step out of that comfort zone within you that would want to clean it up or make it into something else, right? Because any place we're afraid of dying, we're not free. Any place we think this thing that we cannot let go of, this relationship, this story, this belief, this way of seeing ourselves. If you're married to that, you're not in truth. Right, so my invitation, well, I guess there could be two. Right, so the first invitation would be to choose one thing. So one of the ceremonies that happens at Sawin is people will put out their fires at their home and they'll come to the, you know, to the community fire, right? And they bring with them, they bring with them things that they are already dead to. Um, and it may be as, you know, something symbolic. It may be um, something actual, you know, that they can actually put in the fire of letting go and they do so in community. It's scary to die by yourself. Nobody wants to do that. Right? Some, sometimes we need someone to snuggle up beside us and say, if you die, I'll be here to witness. Right? Yeah. So I invite you right now to choose. Choose something that you It's like not even that you're ready or willing to give up because those would be the easy things, right? Choose the thing you think you could not ever give away. I know it's not small, beloved, but you came to the Wild Soul Medicine radio show <laughs> and we don't play small here. That's why you come. So choose the thing, choose the thing. And as we gather here around the pyre, this funeral pyre, the billion day funeral, right? Be with that thing, be with that thing that you're already dying to just by bringing it forward. Just by considering it could be this thing. Notice how it feels to you to hold it. Notice if it feels enlivening. If you feel free, if you feel unencumbered in your consideration of it. Some of you just switched. Some of you are like, well, I was going to give up that thing, but that's for later. And I'm going to give up a different thing. <laughs> I see you. I see you. And you're certainly free to choose. To choose what serves you. And yet here we all stand together under this very auspicious moon. Uh, this turning of the wheel. And there's this space where... We want someone to save us from it. You know, I certainly had that experience during my journey. You know, can't someone talk to me? Can't someone tell me what this is? Isn't there some antidote? Right? As it turns out, the herbs I took, there's no antidote because no one ever has um, a side effect from them. 
no one except for maybe half of 1%, which is me. So there literally was, there was no way out. There was no one who could save me from it. Just as no one can put this thing on the fire for you. Even if I could do it for you, it would just disempower you because it would enforce some belief that you are not in charge, that you are not the creatrix of your attachment to this story, to this construct, to this illusion of wholeness. But as a priestess who has stood here at the turning of the wheel, Lifetime after lifetime after lifetime, you know you cannot take it with you. This thing that you believe is your precious, is your persecutor. And so some of you are already moving toward the fire knowing the truth, allowing yourself to begin to become free. And we do it together, sisters, because the freedom is in seating yourself in that which cannot be taken from you. That is the truth. That is the shining light. And so in a way, it doesn't look a lot different. It doesn't look a lot different than I looked giving that beautiful talk. I wouldn't have done anything different. The moment was beautiful. The holding on to the moment and making it mean something needed to die. And so it did. And so it did. And so here, beloved, you have this last opportunity to lay your peace on the fire of our becoming. Let it die here, never to be returned to you evermore. Just a dead end. You explored that route. You did it all the way to and through. And now a new season. You are so brave. You are so brave and courageous. It is an honor to stand here with you, with each and every one of you. I celebrate your offerings. I bow to your wisdom and counsel. I hold your hand as teacher and student of of our wild walk to remembering ourselves. And you know, what I feel is, um, this could go a couple ways. So, uh, Salween often has celebration on the other side of it. You, um, you know, you can celebrate and have ritual and, um, be, you know, be with each other or be internal or be kind and gentle. You can feast on wonderful food. You can, um, journal, you can share, you know, we'd love to hear from you to share in the tribe, wildsoultribe.com. We'd love to hear from you about what you burned. If you want to share it, or you might share what your freedom is, you know, If you're really dead to the thing, you might not even want to name it again. Um, So that's one way that you could go with this. And the other way might be some grief. You know, 
um, there might be some grief that needs to move in your system. And that's also so okay. It's so okay. Mm -hmm. Grief is a beautiful um, creator of space. It's the sloughing off of that which no longer serves. Mm -hmm. And the letting go of the need to commemorate it. Right. So if you choose the path of grief, I honor that. I meet you there and... Yeah, and I meet you there. Mm -hmm. No need to clean it up. Just being. And so, sisters, today we stand together in the darkness. We stand together in the darkness with the light of our freedom, turning our faces orange and bright. And so it is. Until next time, so much love to you. Bye for now. <laughs>